I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna put my weights on here. Now again, if I had someone else to help me with this one, they could just push down and I don't need this, but I'm all by myself here, so I'm just gonna put them in. So I can make sure that I get this thing pretty well lined up. It's my belief that most people who get into resin 3D printing are doing it for printing tabletop miniatures. And if you go online and ask, what's the best printer I should buy as a new user, a lot of people are gonna recommend smaller printers like this Mini 8KS or this Mars 5 Ultra. They're gonna recommend a smaller printer for new users because, well, they're just generally easier to use. Failures take less resin. Accidental whoops on your machine if you accidentally break it is gonna be significantly cheaper to repair or even replace. And overall, they're just easier to use. But what happens if you move from a small printer to a medium or a large size printer? Like the Revo from Frozen or the Saturn IV Ultra from Elegoo? or this really massive printer from Uniformation, the GK3 Ultra, or a very large printer like this M7 Max from Anycubic, one of my favorites. But that's the topic of this video. What are the settings and different things you need to know if you're planning on moving from a small, medium, or a large format printer? And just to give you an idea of the size difference, the build plate of the M7 Max versus the Mini 8KS. If you see here, this can pretty much do four, four of these in a single print. So there's definitely some bonuses with going a large format printer. But anyway, with all that, let's get going. And now I'm probably to one of the most important parts of this video, and that is what are the settings you need to change in the slicer when moving from a small, medium, or a large printer? For that one, I'm gonna load up Lychee Slicer. I'm just gonna click on 3D Printer up here in the top left. I'm gonna select the Frozen Mini 8KS. This is a small printer. And I'm just gonna click on whatever resin profile came up first. Now, the Settings we're gonna focus on here are really only gonna be a couple. Mostly they're gonna be the lift distance and the light off delay. On some of them, we may mess with speed, but I'd say that's for this particular video, I'm gonna leave that out of it. We're really just gonna focus on those two settings because that's really all that changes when the printer size changes. The reason why we need to focus on the, basically the lift height is because a larger release film has more material to stretch and therefore it will stretch more. So you're gonna need more lift height in order to make sure that you release each every single layer from the release film. And for light off delay, for larger printers, you're gonna need more and more and more. The reason for that being is that, well, cross section. The uh, cross sections are generally gonna be bigger because either you're printing more things at a time or you're printing larger things, or during those bottom layers, that build plate's so huge when it goes down to compress that resin, that's a large surface area to compress. So it's gonna need a lot of light off delay in order to let that resin kind of squeeze out and that layer to get to the layer height in which you expect it to be before you start curing that resin. And then the other reason for increased lap delay just has to do with material properties. The LCD is glass, but it can warp and bend. The chassis where the LCD sits in and the build arm is also, it may just be aluminum and metal, but metal and aluminum still bend. And so what happens is when that build arm goes down and it tries to compress that resin, the LCD is gonna kind of push down, it's gonna kind of bow, and that build arm is gonna kind of flex back. And just a lot of things are gonna shift around. So allowing the light off delay to kind of sit there for a second, allow the printer to come back to square, you're gonna need more for a larger printer than a small printer, just because the size and scale of basically everything. So now let me show you the settings that I use for all three that I found to be pretty much perfect every single time. The first thing I'm gonna look at here is the lift distance on the burn-in layers. Right here, I have it set to four and four. What this is gonna do, it's gonna go four millimeters up slow, four millimeters fast, uh, a total of eight millimeters, and then eight millimeters back down. A total distance travel of 16 millimeters per layer. I don't care to try to dial these in. This is the burn-in layers, there's only four of them. And so if I add some extra time here, overall, it's basically nothing. On a larger printer like the Revo, I'm gonna keep these settings exactly the same. Four and four, total of eight um, up, and then eight down, 16 total. Again, it's just not worth it. However, when I move to a large printer, like the GK3 Ultra or the M7 Max, I am gonna come in here, and on the second, the faster speed, I'm gonna bump that up by two millimeters. I'm gonna go from four to six millimeters on the lift distance. And I'm doing this just because that extra release film does need a little bit extra room when I start getting that size. For the lift height on the normal layers, what we're gonna see is for a small printer, I have this set to two and three. So it's gonna go two millimeters slow, three millimeters fast, a total of five millimeters on the lift height. You can see right here under the normal layers, the two and three. So that's a total of 10 millimeters up and down. If I'm going to a 10 inch printer, so something again like the Revo, I'm gonna set this to three and three, an extra one millimeter. And that's just gonna give that larger release film a little bit more distance to kind of stretch out, make sure everything's released. Using three and three, I've never had an issue with any layer not fully releasing from the release film. But as you can imagine, I just added one millimeter up, one millimeter down. I've added a total of two millimeters of travel for every single layer. So you can see a larger printer starting to slow down just a little bit. However, if I get to a larger printer like the Uniformation GK3 Ultra or the Anycubic M7 Max, and there's also the Jupiter series from Elegoo, what that's gonna have to do here is I'm actually gonna go up another 
two millimeters, but I'm gonna do it on the faster speed. Instead of three, I'm gonna bump that up to five. So now I'm going up a total of eight millimeters up, eight millimeters down, a total of 16 millimeters. As you can see, that's quite a bit different from the smaller one, which was only moving a total of 10 millimeters. So on every single layer, and you can imagine some of these prints can be like 1300 or 3000 layers. So it can add quite a bit of extra time. The next setting has some gotchas in it. So listen closely and, and hopefully it makes sense. And that is light off delay for the bottom layers. So right here, you'll see it listed under here as wait before print. Again, wait before print, wait after retract, light off delay, it's the same thing. But right here under burden layers, it looks like we could set this to whatever we want. And I would love to have this set to 30 seconds. However, if I'm slicing this for .ctb, this setting right here is not used at all. The system is automatically always gonna be using the wait before print or whatever light off delay under the normal layers and the one under burden is completely ignored. If you're slicing using .prz for uh, frozen or .goo for Elgoo's file format, that will take into account the wait before print under the burn-in layers. And I would highly recommend setting that for 30 seconds, regardless of what printer you're using. However, if you are using a big printer, it is really, really important to set that for 30 seconds or even up to 60 if you don't mind adding a minute per, uh, you know, per four minutes on a print like this one to get that extra adhesion to the build plate. If you're using a uniformation printer or .prz and .goo are not really, you don't wanna use them or they're not available to you, there's another thing you can do. You can basically take your slice and load it into UV tools and there you can edit the slice to add some extra light after lay on the bottom layers. Now that is only available if you're using a printer with a Chichu Systems motherboard. That won't work for an Anycubic. For an Anycubic, there's really only one thing you can do. And let me pull up an Anycubic profile here so you can see what I mean. Here I have a profile pulled up for the M7 Max. And you'll see there's only a light after lay listed under the normal layers. There's not one set for the burn-in layers. Also, the UV tools trick won't work with Anycubic printers. What I do on these ones is I'll set a timer on my phone after I start the print for 10 minutes. I'll then go through and I'll basically reduce it by 10 seconds. I'll set another timer, reduce it by another 10 seconds, set another timer, and then after, on that third timer, I'll set it to the, to the real setting that I want for the remainder of the print. For this particular resin, I have it set at four seconds. So by the time you know my third timer goes off on the printer's LCD itself, I'll turn that down to four seconds. However, if you are having problems on a large Anycubic printer with your build plates really sticking, this is a trick that will pretty much work every single time and dramatically increase, if not completely solve any issues with the rafts not sticking to the build plate. And if we look at the wait before print on the normal layers, it's gonna be something very, very similar. On a smaller printer, I'm gonna start around two seconds and I'm gonna calibrate using two. I may go up to three depending on the viscosity of the resin. When it comes to a 10 inch printer, it's the exact same thing. I've noticed that light off delay between the small and the medium sized printers don't really change. However, when I get to a large printer, I'm gonna start at four and then work my way up if it's required. So this guy right here from three will always be a four. And again, we can start to see we're adding more and more time as the printer gets larger and larger and larger, slowing it down. However, these build plates are so big, like I showed you before, one M7 Max is kind of like doing four different prints on a smaller printer. And so in reality, it is still much more efficient to use a large one than a smaller one if you're printing a bunch of stuff. If you're printing something just really, really big, well, just be happy that the fact that you can print something really, really big in one go and not have to chop it up into smaller pieces and then glue it all back together in the end still saving you a lot of time and efficiency, even if the settings overall are gonna print each layer a little bit slower. The first pro and con to be aware of is probably the most obvious, and that's the price. Not just the printer itself, generally larger printers are about twice the price of a smaller printer, but it's also the components. If you wanna buy an extra build plate, vat, you need extra release film, they're gonna also be quite a bit more expensive than a smaller printer. But if you end up having to replace the LCD, that's gonna be another one. However, the cost of the LCD is a lot more to do with the type of LCD rather than the size. Generally, a larger one will be more expensive, but for example, this one is a 7K LCD and this one has an 8K LCD. So although this one is larger, the price point for repairing it is not that much more. However, if we get to something like the Uniformation GK3 Ultra with a very large 16K LCD, that thing is gonna be quite a bit more expensive to replace than either one of these. So it's also not just the size of the printer you have to consider when it comes to price, but also some of the components. The next thing to consider is the resin, not the type of resin. These printers can all print pretty much the same resin. It's how much resin you have left. In this bottle of the RPG Gray here, I've got maybe maybe about that much, maybe 10% left in the bottle. Now I can use this in a smaller printer because the vat is so small. However, on a larger printer like this one, 
Uh, this won't cut it. It'll be too thin and the print will most likely fail. I'll need to have more resin to even get it started than on a smaller one. The next one is, of course, physical space. You gotta make sure you got a big enough table to hold something like this one. But it's not just about physical space that's important. For example, look at this table. It's pretty wobbly. However, the table generally isn't this wobbly, but when I put a big heavy printer like this on top of it, the center of gravity of the table is increased, making it more wobbly than it would be. So just make sure if you're gonna use a big printer, you've got enough table space and your tables are nice and secure because something, this, especially this build plate as it's kind of moving up and down is gonna create some movement and you just don't want that when you're trying to do resin 3D prints. The next thing of course is with a larger build plate, you're gonna to wanna to print larger things. So just make sure that you've got the wash station and cure station in order for all these things to fit. It's also gonna probably require more IPA if you plan on using your printer to print really big things. If you're just using it to print lots and lots of miniature things, then that doesn't really matter. An often overlooked but incredibly critical aspect of owning a large printer like this one is making sure that it's perfectly level. As you can imagine, the distance between center and the corners is quite a bit more than on a smaller printer. So if you're only a little bit out of level, let's say halfway between, like the case of a 10 inch printer, on something like this one, a 13 or 14 inch printer, you're gonna be quite a bit more out of level. So with this part, I'm gonna show you how I level to make sure it's perfect every single time. So it all starts with first loosening up these four bolts on this build plate. I'm just gonna take my Allen wrench here and I'm just gonna go through and loosen them all up. Now that the build plate is loose, the next thing I have to do is make myself a little leveling USB. What I do with this one is I just go into Lychee and I slice, for this one I just sliced a cube, and I'm gonna set the bottom exposure time to 600 seconds and I'm gonna set the light off delay for the bottom layers, uh, if it's an Elegoo or if it's just an Anycubic printer, you only have the one light off delay, as I spoke about earlier in this video. I'm also gonna set that to 600 seconds. That's gonna give me 1200 seconds, which is more than enough time to level this thing while it's printing layer one. And that's very important. I want to level this while it's printing layer one, not using the leveling system it's got built in here. That can have some weird stuff with it. You really wanna do it during the layer one print. The next thing you wanna do is remove the vat. If you've got resin in it, just be careful, mine doesn't. You wanna remove the vat because we're gonna level this on the LCD, but something to be very, very careful of is if you've used this before and there's resin on it, make sure you clean this build plate very, very well. We don't wanna be sending this thing home on the LCD, even if we have paper there, cause that residue or that resin can get on the LCD and ruin it. So just make sure this sucker's super, super clean. Now I'm just gonna take a regular piece of paper and set it over the LCD. The next thing that I've done is I've cut four strips of paper and I just put a little fold into them. I'm gonna put each one of these in each corner just underneath the build plate here. It's also gonna give a little bit extra thickness because we're leveling this right on the LCD and we don't have the release film in the way. We need just a little bit more thickness to make sure that our Z offset is correct. Because unfortunately this printer, like many other newer printers, don't have the ability to set the Z offset after the leveling, it's a part of the leveling. So if you end up doing a level check and you realize you're maybe still too, like your layers are showing up too thin or they're too thick, you may have to do this again, but use uh, either more or less paper, depending on how thick the paper is that you're using. Now that I've installed the USB key, I just went on there and told it to print the box that I set up earlier. It's gonna go through and do a check. It's gonna find that there's no resin. It's gonna come up with a little error that says not enough resin to do the print right there. I'm just gonna click on ignore to, well, start the print anyway. So now you can hear the print started. It's gonna be a little bit noisier for the rest of this video. I do apologize for that. I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna put my weights on here. Now again, if I had someone else to help me with this one, they could just push down I don't need this, but I'm all by myself here, so I'm just gonna put them in. Luckily, these weights have a hole in them and this thing has kind of like a cross in the center. So I can make sure that I get this thing pretty well lined up. And now from here, I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna basically tighten these screws in a crisscrossing pattern, always kind of going kitty corner to the screw. I'm gonna do about four to five turns on each one until it's tight. I'm not gonna tighten each one at a time. And now that I've gone through and tightened up all my bolts doing multiple passes, I'm gonna remove these two right here before that layer finishes. I think it's pretty important. I don't want this weight on the build plate while it lifts up. It could probably handle it. It's not that much weight, but I don't wanna risk it. I can then remove this. Now I can check my four corners just to make sure everything's nice and tight. Yeah, everything's pretty tight and the tension feels the same on each of them. Now I'm just gonna stop the print and that's it, I'm done. This printer should now be perfectly leveled every single time. And the good thing about a build plate like this one is I should never really have to level it again. These things are pretty hard to throw out of level. So pretty much I never have to do this again unless I'm making another video for you guys. Also with that being said, make sure to like and subscribe on the Lighty YouTube channel. These videos definitely do take some effort and your like and subscribing really do help out quite a bit. And if you haven't already, join us on the Lighty Slicer Discord, reach out to our moderators or myself. We would all definitely love it if you said hello. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.